this video we're going to show you how to get started with Stratosphere. Uh, this is the kind of video that you should probably watch before you get started, so when you open the program for the very first time, you have an idea of where you're headed. In this video, we're primarily going to look at everything from the Excel side of the program. Keep in mind that you can do almost everything I'm doing here using the program as a standalone, but in this video, we're going to focus on using Microsoft Excel. So here I've got a, an example spreadsheet loaded up, and you'll notice now that I've downloaded the Excel add-in, we have a new tab up here called Stratosphere. I'm going to click on that, and the very first thing we're going to do is sign in. Hit the Sign In button right here, and then hit Sign In once more. It'll prompt me for my username and password, and in this case, that's just going to be my email. Okay, I'm going to hit Submit, and then it's going to ask me if I want to allow the program to work with Excel, and I'm going to choose Allow. All right, now that I'm signed in, this is the list of all my projects that I have in my cloud account. But on this example, we're going to add a new project. So we'll hit this button down here that says Add New Project. And in this project, we're going to name our project the Wilson Residence. OK, and we'll hit Save. Now, if on the previous screen where you created your new project, if you have the box checked that says, open new project in a new browser window, then when you hit save it will automatically launch your browser and take you to the login screen here. Once you log in again, as I'll show you here, log in here, and it should take us right to the new project that we've created. Okay, now you'll notice we're working with the Wilson residence. If you want to change the title of the project, you can always do so over here. So now that we have our project loaded, the next thing we're going to want to do is load in our plan. So we'll use the Add Documents button under the Documents tab on the left-hand side toolbar. We'll hit Add Document. And in this short video, we're going to show you guys how to add a new document to your cloud drive. So I'm going to bring this window over here to the right, and I'm going to open up my File Explorer. I've added an example floor plan just to show you guys how to add in a new plan to your cloud drive. And to do that, all we have to do is just simply click the file, and drag it and drop it into the cloud drive. Now you see down here at the bottom it's uploading the example floor plan. Once that's done, we have once that's done, we have the example floor plan right here. Simply click that and select it for use on this project. Now it's loading uploading the plan to this project right here. This you'll only have to do this the very first time you start a new project. After that, the plan will already be loaded in. It's taking a little while to optimize this page here. But once this is loaded up, we'll see, there you go, preparing document. We'll see a list of all the pages here. I believe this plan only has one page, so we have the page one of the example floor plan right here. Now that we have our plan loaded into this project, it's time to set the scale. Setting the scale is something you're only going to have to do for each page one time, and, but you can always go back and edit it if you want. Now there's two ways to do that. The first way is by manually entering the scale if it's given to you on the plan. So that way if you have, let's say, quarter inch to one foot architectural scale or one inch equals 20 feet for an engineering scale, you can do that here and just hit save scale. The other option is calibrate the page scale and we always recommend calibrating the page scale um, just to be sure. So I'll show you how to calibrate the page scale here. So what we'll do is we'll come to a known distance, in this case I'll use this one right over here, which is two and a half feet. So we're going to hit calibrate page scale. It'll prompt me for a start point, which is going to be right here and an endpoint, which we'll have right here. Then it'll give me this prompt in feet, and because it's 2.5 feet, I'll say 2.5. Then I'll hit Save Scale. And we can always go back and recalibrate this page scale if we want. Now we're going to show you guys another little interesting trick here that you can do. You can select this page here, page 1, right? And right over by where the Scale button is, there's an option to rename the page. So we'll re just rename this page the First Floor for our example. We'll hit enter and you'll notice up here 
in our page navigation menu and over here in our documents. That page is renamed as the first floor. Obviously on this plan we only have one page, but if you have multiple pages, that's a very useful tool to have. Now that we have our page set and we've renamed this page, the very next thing we're going to do is start completing our takeoffs. But to do that, we're going to start from Excel to show you guys how that works. So we'll go back into Excel and we'll start with the 8 foot exterior wall here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here into these layer options where we can select an area, a count, or a length. In this case, because we're working with this exterior wall, we're going to go to select length. Wilson residence and we're going to select add new layer. What that means is that in stratosphere it's going to add a new takeoff item to our list. So we'll hit add new layer right there and you'll notice that a zero pops up in that box. So now we'll go back into stratosphere and we'll go over to our layers tab and you'll see the eight foot exterior wall. You'll also see this layer one in here. Layer one is just automatically added so that you can edit that if you want but it's just automatically added in there. Okay now that we have this eight foot exterior wall added we're going to go up here and use our line tool to complete that takeoff. So we'll select the line tool and as with all of our takeoffs you can always use the style options over here where you can change the background color and the line color. This also changes the width of the outline but in this case because we're working with just a line we'll just use the line color here. Now we can use this whole list of colors here and come up with almost infinite colors. So in this case we'll go with this green. Okay. And you'll notice after I use some colors, these are some of my previous colors, they'll be added to this little bank down here so you can keep track of colors you've already used. So we'll use that color right there. And just in the interest of time, I'm not going to go around this entire project. But we'll create our line from here to here to here. We'll zoom out here to here to here. Now to complete this shape, I'm just going to double click or I can just click back on the last point of my line here. So you'll notice right over here that the 8 foot exterior wall now has a 54.3 foot measurement for the length, the area, the length, and then the count. The count is obviously 1 here. So this is 54.3 feet. We'll switch back into Microsoft Excel and we'll hit refresh all. And you'll notice that 54.3 feet is added right there. All right, now that we have this quantity input here for the 8-foot exterior wall, we're going to show you how to do some area quantities. So in this case, the standard and vaulted ceilings. So I'm going to select both of these destination cells here, and because we want an area out of this measurement, we're going to go up here to the Stratosphere tab and select Area. Then we're going to go to Add New Layers. You'll see the zeros populate in these cells here. We'll go back to Stratosphere, and you'll find the standard and vaulted ceilings. Okay, so we'll start with the standard ceiling here in this family room. So we'll go in here and we'll choose this color here, which I've used previously. This blue color, and then for the line, we'll choose this pink. Now, instead of using the line tool, which we used for our wall takeoff, we're going to use the rectangle tool because we're measuring this area. So to use the rectangle tool, we'll simply click to start on our start point, and then we'll click again when we fill the shape here. Now you see the number right there, that 355.2 feet. And again, over here in the area column, we're going to have 355.2 feet. You'll also have the length measurement for that quantity. That's that 75.6. And the count is obviously 1. Okay, now we'll use a similar tool for the vaulted ceiling, which we'll use in this master bedroom. Now, instead of using the rectangle tool on this takeoff, we're going to use the area tool. The area tool works a little differently. For the area tool, we're going to click on a start point here, and then we'll move along and click each of the corner points in the room. We'll go over here. Now, in a, a useful tool that we have in Stratosphere is something we call ortho mode, which is basically a straight line mode. So if you hold down the shift key, regardless of where I end up with my mouse, it'll always create a straight line. So while I'm holding down the shift key, we'll get that straight line there, that straight line there. We'll finish this up by clicking on our original start point. Didn't do a great job here, but this is our master bedroom now. And in here we have the 250.3 square feet, the 66 linear feet, and the one count. 
Now, a unique thing that you can do in Stratosphere, we'll use the Select tool here, is we'll select this shape here. And again, the Style menu will pop up with the background, line color, and line thickness. Now, we can change the character of this shape. So let's say that we want to make our shape a different color. We'll use the blue here. And you'll notice automatically it'll change the color here. And what's really unique about Stratosphere is that we have a transparency meter, which is this bar over here on the right. So if we want to make our shape more transparent, we can click down here and it'll make that blue color more transparent. Or if we want to make it more opaque, we'll click up higher and it'll make it darker. We'll leave it right there for now. Now we'll go back into our Excel spreadsheet. And in these two boxes here, we have automatically the 355 square feet and the 250 square feet. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to complete a quantity takeoff for a count. So here we're going to work with a 3x3 and 4x3 windows. Now instead of approaching it from the same way that we've done previously, where we've gone up to select area, select count, select length up here, and created new layers, instead we're going to approach it from the stratosphere side. So we'll start with the 3x3 window here. We'll go into Stratosphere, and over here we're going to hit Add Layer. That creates a new layer and gives us the Layer Options menu on the right-hand side, where the first thing we'll do is we'll rename this layer to be the 3x3 window. We'll press Enter and have that layer here. Now we can obviously change the background color, the line color, and since we're working with the count symbol, we can change the count symbol here. So I'll choose the diamond. Then we'll go up to our top toolbar, select the Count tool, and we'll place 1, 2, three count symbols. Now we have our count up here at three, and we can flip back to Microsoft Excel. Now you'll notice there's nothing in this cell, but that's because we haven't linked this cell to a specific quantity in Stratosphere. So here we'll go to select count, the project we're working on, and the three by three window. Now we have that quantity input here as three. Now we can do the same thing with the four by three window, going back in here, hitting add layer, and then coming back to Excel after we've completed our takeoff, and using the select count button to add that layer's quantity. Now that we've worked through the basics of how to log in, start your projects, and use our basic takeoff tools, I'm going to show you guys some useful tips and tricks that I haven't quite shown you yet. So just starting from the Excel interface, there's a couple buttons up on the top that I haven't talked about yet. You can use the View Project button right here, and it'll open up a brand new browser window and show you your full project with all your quantity takeoffs on it. If you want to just view a specific takeoff, you can press the View Layer button, and it will again open up a new browser window, but in this case, since I have the standard ceiling selected here, it will show me just the quantity takeoff for the standard ceiling. Now there's a couple other useful things I can show you within the Stratosphere window, and to do that, I'm just going to add a new layer, and I'm going to call it Test, so we can test out some of these new things. I'm just going to use this open space over here, and of course I could change the background color, the line style, and the count symbol, but we'll just work with the generic ones for now. Now the first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to use the backspace tool. I'll show you with the area here. So let's say you're working on an area takeoff here, and your sh shape is starting to complete itself, but let's say you've made a mistake on this point here. You can always press the backspace key, and it will delete the most recent point you've made on that takeoff. Again, this is while you are completing your takeoff, so I have not yet finished this shape. So if I just press the backspace key right now, it will delete the most recent point. If I press it again, it'll give it at this point here. Again, this point right here. One more time here. And it, finally, if I press it with only one point remaining, it'll delete that takeoff. Now let's say instead that I have completed this shape here by clicking on my start point, and I've got my quantities here. I can use the select tool up here to select this shape. Now that I have this shape selected, I can move it around wherever I want. I can rotate it by selecting this top blue rectangle at the top and rotating that shape all around. Or if I want to change the shape more precisely, I can zoom in and select one of these red circles on the corners and move just that corner of the shape to get my takeoff just right. Now to delete that takeoff, I'll just select it and press delete, and that takeoff is eliminated. Now a couple other useful things. If you don't want to use the scroll wheel for your zooming in and zooming out, you can use the zoom in here, the zoom out here. And one of our very useful little tools is this other zoom function that we have, where you'll ha select the zoom tool up here, right here, and select an area like this, and that area will zoom to fill the screen. 
Now next to that we have the fit button here. If you press the fit button, it will fit the project to the area that you have available on your screen. Now a few other minor things to finish up here. If we're working with an area here, completed shape, we can use our subtract area function within this area to cut out a hole in this. This would be useful for doors, windows, that sort of thing. So if we go like this, it'll make that shape a little more transparent. And you'll notice over here that it cut the area down on that takeoff because we subtracted some of the area out of the middle. Now the final thing I want to show you guys here in this little tips and tricks section is the highlight pen. So let's say we're, we want to highlight the garage, the label up here. We're working with someone else in our company and we want to show the, highlight the garage to make sure they give proper attention to it. To do that, we'll select the highlight pen from up here. Then we can circle this, we can underline it, we can do whatever we want with it. And just like all of our other tools, you can select that right here. And then you can change the color. Let's say we want to underline it in green and we want to make that a little thicker. So we'll make that a five thickness. Oh, excuse me. So we make that a little thicker. Now there's two small tools up at the top that I've yet to show you, and I want to make sure I at least mention them so that the first time you guys see the program, you know what those are. The first one of those is the ellipse tool. The ellipse tool works exactly the same way as the rectangle tool, except obviously it forms an ellipse shape. So here we have our background color and our line color selected for our test layer, and we're going to simply click a start point, and we're going to click an end point, and it'll create an area takeoff for that ellipse. Now the other thing I've yet to show you is the image tool. The image tool is something we're working on where you'll be able to upload an image here and you'll just be able to drag and drop images the same way that I drag and drop my plan in here and I don't have any uploaded but what we'll do is we'll be able to simply upload an image to your Stratosphere account by dragging and dropping it into this area here and then you'll be able to place what we call a hotspot so it'll be a small little link so that when someone clicks on that they'll be shown that image now this would be useful let's say you have a custom door that you want to install here on the master bedroom Right? So you can simply put an image hotspot there. So next time you go to look at your project or you show the project to someone else, they can click on that image hotspot and that image will pop up and they'll be able to see it there. With those final tools in there, that just about wraps up our getting started video for Stratosphere. We hope that this has really helped you and again, we encourage you to watch this video before you start using the program. So when you see all these tools, you'll at least have an idea of how to handle them. If you still have more questions, you can always give us a call at 1-800-748-6636. But before you do that, we encourage you to visit our new help website that's called www.stratospherehelp.com. You can go to that website and there's tons of very small little videos there that can help fill in the gaps for you if you've forgotten how to do something or if you come across a new tool that you don't quite understand. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope you really enjoy using Stratosphere. Again, don't hesitate to call us or contact us in any way if you still have more questions.